What's up, everybody? It is your girl, Kairos Crystal, coming with you with another episode of Single on a Sunday. If you are new here, I want to say hello, welcome, thanks for clicking on the link, and if you are a familiar face, hey, good to see y'all again. Check in in the comments so I know that you're watching. Tonight's video is going to be an impromptu part two. A part two on obedience. So I have this saying, and it's going to become a regular thing for me, but I'm going to start saying people, well, how did the two of you meet? Like, how did you and your husband meet? Here's what I'm going to start saying to that. <laughs> obedience introduced me to my husband. Let me say it again. Obedience to God introduced me to my husband. So tonight we are going to dig into this concept of obedience. I already did a podcast on it. It's over on Anchor or the Spotify app. And so you can check out Single on a Sunday podcast where I go a little bit deeper into these topics. But for today, let's get into how obedience introduced me to my husband. So I'm going to share with you all a story. This is the story of how my life got turned upside down. Not just playing. <laughs> but this is the story about the process of how I created my book, All the Single Ladies. If you don't have your copy, see the description below for a link to go purchase your very own copy. But the process of writing All the Single Ladies really was about a seven year process if I'm doing my math and remembering everything correctly. You see, as a debut author, I can laugh about it now, but when I was in it, I didn't understand what was happening. I did not want to write All the Single Ladies. It is an easy read, a quick reading book. However, you would think I could have written that in no more than a year's time, but it took years. It took years to write that book, mainly because I didn't want to do it. I did not want to be labeled as a singles minister. I did not want to even spend the necessary time with God in order to get the revelation and the perspective of singleness that he was providing throughout this book. And so I truly delayed the process of this coming to pass. Now, you may be saying, well, Crystal, writing a book is one thing. Okay, let's try that again. Now, you, be, you may be saying, a little bit. Now, you may be saying, Crystal, writing a book is one thing. What does that have to do with? your husband. What does that have to do with meeting your husband? So if you do not know, I met my husband on the Clubhouse app. And the only reason, the Scouts Honor, Girl Scout, I used to be a Girl Scout, Girl Scouts Honor, the only reason that I even bothered to get onto the Clubhouse app was because I was wrapping up the process of writing the book and I wanted to know how to self-publish. I wanted to know what were the next steps in marketing my book. I wanted to know and just become familiar with all things around creating this book. And so I had heard about Clubhouse that, yeah, there was foolishness going on with it, but I also heard that there were a lot of good things like free knowledge. And so when I heard this, I was like, I bet there's something on Clubhouse that can help me finish the process of releasing this book. And sure enough, in my early days of Clubhouse, I spent the majority of my time going through those rooms that were like self-publishing secrets and what to do with a book to make income and all of the things for that. It was just like that one time you all, maybe I probably went in the shoot your shot room like two or three times, but it, it was not the reason why I was on Clubhouse. I was on Clubhouse because I was writing the book. Now this blows my mind because here I am at the end of a seven year process, getting ready to literally smack dab meet the very thing that I've been praying for, all because I was obedient to God. 
So when the Lord asked me to write the book, I started off and then I would stop and then I would start and then I would stop and I would start and I would stop. And over time, I began to call it writer's block. I began to put excuses in place of reasons why I could not finish what God had called me to do, right? And maybe within the last, I would say two or three years of the entire seven year process of writing the book, the Holy Spirit really began to deal with me and help me to know that I was simply being disobedient at this point. It wasn't writer's block, I had studied the the characters and the women in the bible i had you know gotten done research in the market and talked to other single ladies i had downloaded all of the grammarly and all of the tools and everything that i need to finish this book but i did not finish this book let me tell you a funny story my friend posted one of my college friends posted mm, somewhere in february i believe it was february of 2020 he posted on his facebook post what is what is what is the thing that you need in order to do what god has called you to do and i was like wow this is this is something and i i knew immediately and so i replied to his comment and i said i need time away from my nine to five I need more time to be at home away away from my nine to five in order to finish what God has called me to do. I didn't say anything about a book or anything like that. I just said in order to do what God has called me to do. Do you not know? It was not more than two weeks that after I put that on my on his post that the world was shut down for a global pandemic. So you see, the Lord had given me chance after chance after chance after chance after chance the lord had extended so much grace to me in this seven year project that this really was the last straw and so i believe not that our pandemic is not a serious issue but i also believe that the lord has allowed it so that people can have some more time to do some other things, to focus on some other things. For me, it was the All the Single Ladies book. And so throughout that time, I started writing and started writing and started writing and started writing because I had the time at home now. And before I know it, December came around and I had finished this book. I, you all, when I think about this entire process of obedience. I really don't think I would have met my husband had I not finished the book. I don't think that there would have been an opportunity for us to even be introduced. Remember, I had come to his state two years prior to me meeting him. I came to a state for a, a family reunion trip. And I told my girlfriends at that time, I said, I do not like this place. I don't think I'm coming back. And within two years time, here I am married, living in the place that I said that I did not like, right? So I don't think there would have been any other way for us to meet. We were 1700 miles apart. And had it not been for technology, the Clubhouse app, all of those tools are great, but I want you to catch the center of this was my obedience. So I want to spend some time in obedience because I did a, a full run of the story over on the podcast. So if you want to hear all the juicy details about the story, you'll have to go over to the podcast. But let's just talk briefly about obedience, specifically as a single person. OK, now. I know that I'm sharing this message of encouragement with you all. And some of you could be saying, that's what I need to do. I need to obey. I need to obey. I need to obey. But I want to be clear. Okay. I want to be clear in saying, we don't obey God to get a husband. We don't obey God to get a house, to get a car, to get anything, right? Like God is not the genie on Aladdin. Although we loved Aladdin us, us 90 kids, right? Like, God is not genie. We we don't, it's, it's, that's not the type of exchange that we're having with God. We obey God because we love him. So by the end of this video, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you and I'll just ask you right now, 
what are those things that you have not obeyed God on? What, what are they? And, you know, those are the notes that you might want to start taking when you feel those impressions from Holy Spirit or those those gut checks or those heart tugs. You may want to say, I'm not obeying God. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. We obey God because we love him. The proof is in the scripture. I got a scripture for you all. We're going to do like many Bible study. Many, many, many. OK, John 14 and 15. It says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's the English standard version. We'll be there tonight, right? So whatever it is that God has called you to do, no, there may not be a husband on the other side of that. That, that was a part of, of my story. I knew after about, after about, I don't know, the third or fourth year of me going back and forth and telling God I wasn't going to do this book and he can give it to somebody else and all that stuff. After about three or four years of that, Holy Spirit was like, okay, let me let me tell you a secret because you you getting ready to be real reckless for the next five years. Let me tell you a secret. This book is actually connected to your husband. So the longer it takes you to write this book, there's a possibility that you're delaying meeting your husband. So somewhere in the middle of that, I started to know like, ah, this book is attached to my husband, right? But there were other things that I also needed to obey God on, right? That I was not obeying God on. I, I was very rebellious, just running away, running away from ministry, running away from uh, maturing in God, running away from tough and difficult conversations, right? And so though there were some other things I needed to obey God for. So just because you do one act of obedience with a heart that says, God, I'm doing this so that you could give me my husband, we don't force God to, to operate like that. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. So John 14 and 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's a simple request. That's a simple request, right? And we may be saying, well, God, I, I do all these other things as a single woman, right? Like I've been celibate. I've been abstinent. I'm serving in the church. I'm focused on all these things. And it's like, we go to God with this list of why he ought to bless us, not realizing that him giving us life every day, breath every day, being in our right mind every day is already a blessing, right? And so we go to God with this list. And I, I only know you all because I, it was me. It was me. I went to God and I was like, Lord, I know, I know you're not going to keep giving everybody else a husband and not me. And, and this was my real conversation with God. I'm a virgin. I'm not sleeping around out here. I'm serving in ministry. I'm paying my tithes. I'm I'm doing all the things that you asked me to do. But in all actuality, there was a lot of stuff that I was not doing. Some of it was big, like this book that scared me to death. And some of it was very small, like pick up the phone and call somebody, right? And so when we think about obedience and sacrifice, sometimes our sacrifice is in vain. Sometimes God is like, that's cute. But I'm not asking you for that. I'm, I'm not asking you to go on a 40 day fast for your husband. I'm not asking you to, you know, not go out on any dates. I'm not asking you to do any of that. So, your, you know, your sacrifice, that's cool. But I'm not asking you that, right? I want you to start with obedience. Start with obedience so that you won't have to sacrifice, right? Because remember, our obedience is because we love him. So, so start with loving God. Start with walking by faith. Start with honoring God in your dating life. Start with those things so that you won't have to sacrifice on the back end of that, right? I had to learn you all. And it's very difficult. This is one of the reasons why I even wrote all the single ladies, because I was crying out to God to understand why, what I felt like at least, why my single season was so long. In hindsight, it was not that long. I still have more years in front of me than I do behind me, right? 
it, in hindsight, it wasn't that long, but I get it. I know in the moment it feels like forever, right? And so the Lord had to help me to realize this thing. I'm putting it at the bottom. My singleness, and, and this is a big chunk of my book, All the Single Ladies, but my singleness had a purpose. It had an assignment and it was not just to prepare me for marriage. Sometimes we think the only thing singleness is supposed to do is we're supposed to sit and learn how to be a good wife, how to be submissive, how to cook a meal, how to take care of kids. Like for some reason, this entire span of singleness has evolved into this is how you get a man, or this is how you become a good wife, or this is how you prepare when in actuality, you can ask anybody on the face of this earth that's been married. You can do some things, but you'll never be prepared. You'll never be fully ready, right? And so that's when it clicked for me that there was an assignment attached to my singleness, check this, that had to be completed while I was single. While I was single. So you may be saying, well, God, I will obey you when I get the husband. You may be saying, God, I'll buy that house when I get the husband. I'll move to this country when I get the husband. I will give you all my time and serve in ministry and do what you want me to do and preach to people when I have the covering of a husband. I said that before. I said, God, I don't want to preach because I'm not covered. And God was like, psh, psh, psh. smacking me inside my head, right? Like I was like, seriously. You, you think you're not covered because you're single? And, and that's why you're not going to do my will? Because you think you're not covered? Didn't I create you? Don't, don't I get you home safe every night? Don't I tuck you in bed? Don't I provide for you? Don't I? And you, you think you're out here uncovered? Because you don't have a ring on your finger? That's another video. Right? And so... The, the, one of the assignments of my singleness was to complete all the single ladies. I didn't realize this at first, but let me tell you how it hit me like a sack of bricks. I was at a conference in November and I was vending my book. And at this conference, there were a lot of single women. Now, this was the first conference that I attended with my husband because my husband has a game. And so he and I vend it together, me with my book and him with his game. And so we set up our tables right next to each other. And I was able to minister to women in a way that I never had before. I was able to encourage women in a way that I never had before because I had the book, right? I, I had this... Um, this tool, if you will, I had this tool that, I mean, my book doesn't tell you how to get a man, but there are some other principles for like personal development in there. And so I had this tool. And as I was telling people about this tool, I was also able to testify in it. So God gave me the tool and he also gave me the testimony because I, I was vending the book and I would say, this is my book. I said, now, ladies, I know that you see me with a wedding ring on. I want to let you know I wrote and completed this book in my singleness and not many months, really days, not many days later, I met my husband. I finished the book in December. I met my husband in January and I published the book in February. Right. And so I was able to testify that. This is the fruit of my obedience. Right. My, my husband is the is the one of the fruits of my obedience. Right. And so I'm so grateful that it clicked for me. No matter how long your single season takes, you got to you got to stay in that season because it is it is timed with someone else's breakthrough. It is timed with a testimony. It is timed with the agenda of heaven and the agenda of God. So. I, I found this scripture. I didn't find it. I was I was reading through the book of Romans and this scripture. Every time I read it, it blows my mind. It says, for as by the one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. One man's disobedience 
Yeah, that's huge. One man's disobedience caused others to to be sin to to be sin bound to be sinners right to sin. There's a whole context of this scripture, but go with me here. And then one man's obedience caused other men to be made righteous. I wonder. I wonder. I did I put this up here? Yeah. I wonder, could you be delaying your promise? Could you be delaying your blessing? Could you be delaying someone else's promise and delaying someone else's blessing? Hmm? Like, let's really have a moment with that. Obedience to God's command for your life, right? If you obey God's command, it breaks the unnecessary hardships. It, it breaks the attack of unnecessary hardships and stress right? Not only does it do that, but Romans 5, 19 just told us that through your obedience, many get to be made righteous. What would have happened if Jonah would have went to Nineveh the first time, like God said the first time, but, but that, but he didn't, he disobeyed. And so there was an unnecessary hardship. Like Jonah, you sitting up here in a, in the belly of fish, bro. Like that's wild. That's wild because you disobeyed, right? Queen Vashti, we forget about her. We we want to say, you know, that the king was sexist and, you know, she didn't want to be paraded and blah, 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 blah. But the custom of that day, <laughs> and she knew what she signed up for. The custom of that day was you obey that king. You obey that king. And so what happened? She decided to disobey. She got kicked out. And then and there was an open door for Esther to come on through. Wow. 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 What happens when you disobey? Are, are you willfully giving your blessing to someone else? Are you opening the door for someone else to come in as you're being pushed out because you, you won't obey God? Let's go back to this question. Could you be delaying your promise? Could you be delaying your blessing? One of our viewers, one of my viewers, thank you, um, sent a comment in that said, I wonder if I have missed out on my husband for a couple of different reasons that they listed, right? Like, I wonder if I've missed out. And do you know this week alone, that has come up three different times on multiple occasions this week alone that has come up. I wonder if I missed my husband. We got to deal with that. We got to deal with that. So there is an opportunity, you all, for us to obey. There is an opportunity for us to obey. I want you to answer in the comments. This is my question for you to challenge you. What is the thing that God has called you to do that you have not yet done? What is it? Let's let's give voice. Let's give let's let's amplify what that thing is, because I'm telling you, when you put it out into the atmosphere, when you start to write it out, when you start to give others permission to hold you accountable to that thing, there is a supernatural strength that truly does come upon you. And what you thought you lacked, you see that when you opened up your mouth and you said it, you got support. You have the resources, you have the wherewithal, you have the know-how. So I want you to be bold. I want you to, to use this as an act of courage and an act of faith. Like, yes, I've been running from doing this. Yes, I know God has called me to do this. But today, today I'm going to get it done. What is that thing? I want you to write it down in the comments. I have to share this one little nugget that God gave me, and then we're going to be out of here, okay? It says, so if you are obeying God, because I know that there is a remnant, okay, of the saved sisters, and I, sis, I'm praying for you, girl, right? So if you say, Crystal, I am obeying God, I, I am obeying God, and I still don't have a husband. Remember the first point. We don't obey to get a husband. We obey because we love him. That, that's not the way your husband is going to come. But I would encourage you, keep doing that. Keep being obedient, right? I make no promises. This is what the Lord 
put on my heart for you. I make no promises that obedience is going to bring you a man at the exact hour that you want him. But above anything else, your heavenly father will be pleased. Your heavenly father will be pleased. And not only will he be pleased, but he's taking note of that. So if you readily obey, your assignment is to continue to walk by faith and to trust God's timing. So remember, beloved, you are blessed, you are beautiful, and you are loved every single day. And there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. God has not forgotten about you. I'll see y'all later.